Welcome to Boone Hall Plantation, America's oldest working plantation. Located in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, 30 minutes from the port city of Charleston, Boone Hall contains over five centuries of Southern culture and history. In 1681, colonist John Boone founded his 1,200-acre plantation to grow indigo, cotton, and rice. Cotton was a huge cash crop before the Civil War and accounted for over half the value of all goods exported from the U.S. In 1793, after Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin, Boone Hall became a very successful cotton plantation. In 1880, this cotton gin house was created to help pull seeds out of the cotton. Behind the main house on the plantation's property, there is a tidal creek that leads into the Atlantic Ocean where a cotton dock house is located. It is based on the original cotton dock used to ship out cotton, but Hurricane Hugo knocked that down. This cotton dock was located at the edge of the Wampanchian Creek and was where all the plantation goods were shipped towards Charleston. After they reached the harbor, they were shipped to other destinations. Ships would have to arrive when the tides were right to ensure good transport of goods. Today, about three days per month, there's so much water from high tide that water fills the entire marsh and swamplands. Today, only one-fourth of an acre of cotton is grown here. When the Horlbeck brothers purchased the plantation in 1817, 15,000 pecan trees were planted where the cotton fields used to be. There are also many other trees that grow on the plantation, including the South Carolina palmetto tree. There are also many live oaks, which are evergreen trees found in the east, southeastern U.S. They can grow to be 50 feet tall with branches that are 70 feet long. These trees can live to be over 400 years old, and the oldest on the property is this 600-year-old tree. There are currently 88 live oak trees that line the entrance to the plantation that are over 250 years old. Only two of the originals have been lost as a result of lightning and Hurricane Hugo. What you see hanging off of the trees is called Spanish moss. It is a type of moss that is also the only species of the pineapple family that grows naturally in the U.S. Today, Boone Hall's biggest cash crops are strawberries and tomatoes. There are over 18 acres of strawberry fields here. Squash, blueberries, muscadine grapes, and peaches are also grown here. Fun fact, South Carolina is one of the biggest producers of peaches in the U.S., only second to California. Boone Hall also grows corn, squash, and tomatoes in their fields. Buckwheat is used to enrich the soil and make the plants grow better. The plastic that you see lining the fields is what holds in irrigation during the warmer months and heat during the cooler months. All of this produce is sold locally at Boone Hall Farms Market and is purchased by local residents, businesses, and restaurants. Let's learn a little about the plantation's past history. John Boone moved from Barbados and brought slaves with him here in 1681. The Boone family was very active with the colonial government in Charleston and helped defend the colony against the Indians, Spanish, and English. One fun fact about the Boone family is that John Boone's great-grandson, John Rutledge, was the leader of the drafting committee for the Constitution. His brother, Edward, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. After the Boones lived here, the plantation was sold to brothers John and Henry Horlbeck. They started a brick manufacturing industry at the plantation, and slaves made many bricks for downtown Charleston and Fort Sumter. Over 4 million bricks were shipped out each year. In 1935, the plantation was sold to a lumber company who helped clear the pecan trees following a bad storm. This company could not afford to pay mortgage as a result of the Great Depression, so they sold the plantation in 1939 to Canadian diplomat Thomas Stone for $60,000. He built the current colonial style model of the home based on the original Boone home that burned down in a fire. The main door was saved from the Boone's 1760 home. The door was wide so that women with hoop skirts could fit through when they came here for parties. 
1955, the current owners, the McRae family, bought the plantation and opened it to the public. Their daughter was the very first tour guide at the plantation when she was 13. Things have not always been great here, as slavery was huge. Slaves were sent to many port cities in the eastern U.S., from Jackson, Florida, to Wilmington, North Carolina, to some parts of Virginia. West Africans were brought to Sullivan Island, where they were quarantined, cleaned, and auctioned off. Slaves who were sent here were working the rice fields, manufacturing bricks, and cooking and cleaning for the Boone family. They had no freedom. If a slave wanted to marry another slave, they had to get the master's permission and the master had the right to break up the marriage. Children were split from their parents and sent to other plantations. Slaves could only leave the plantation to visit family, but this was a rare occurrence. The only slaves who typically were allowed to leave were those who could read and write or who could conduct business. Slaves who worked out in the fields lived in board houses with dirt floors, no windows, and no fireplace. Luckier slaves who had special skills like carriage building or who worked a lot for the master got to live in small slave cabins with a few windows and a fireplace. Although only nine of the original slave cabins remain here, there used to be 27 that were built by the slaves themselves. These slaves had their own customs and traditions and became part of the Gullah culture. For food, they would make a Hoppin' John rice casserole and collard greens every new year for good luck. Rice was and continues to be the number one staple in the Gullah kitchen. On the plantation, Gullah slaves ate in traditional West African style with large communal pots and round bottom bowls. When they cooked dishes with salt meat, They'd use this smokehouse, the oldest building on the property. Let's listen to an example of the Gullah dialect that was prominent among slaves at Boone Hall. Now the mother said it, Ma, they had me walking in that field all day, they didn't from see to can't see. Me, they had us working in the field all day today from can't see to can't see. Can't see, they can't see, meaning we got up in the dark to go to work when we couldn't see. We didn't get to come home to the dark, but we still couldn't see. Walking from can't see. This dialect, which is more difficult to understand, made it easier for slaves on the plantation to talk about their master or guests at the master's home without them knowing. Many Gullah slaves also liked singing. Oftentimes, they would sing about the Underground Railroad coming through and would send messages of escape through their songs. Let's listen to one example of a song that was commonly sung by slaves on the plantation. Burdens them down, come back the riverside, steady walk no more. We ain't gon' steady walk no more. We ain't gon' steady walk no more. We ain't gon' steady walk no more. Aside from singing, they love to worship nature, including the sun, trees, clouds, and animals. They also were known for making quilts and basket weaving on the plantation. In January of 1863, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation allowed these slaves to have the freedom to leave. Today, aspects of the Gullah culture brought over by slaves are still very prominent in coastal regions of the southeastern U.S. As you can see, Boone Hall has played a huge role in both past and recent history. 
Some of the buildings that existed over 100 years ago are still located here today, and the plantation is still agriculturally successful. There's also some great geography here, as there's many fields, forests, farms, swamps and marshlands, and a tidal creek. It is very interesting to learn about how the nation's oldest working plantation is now used as a home, a farm for animals, a wedding location, a movie spot, and a place where local food is grown. Thank you for joining me on our virtual field trip, and I hope you enjoyed learning about Boone Hall Plantation.